All right, everybody, this time around we got ourselves one of these scorpion helmets, kind of where the front of the face comes right off, so you can have a three-quarter or a full face helmet. Let's see what we can do. After a pretty simple um, tape-off job, I go ahead and scuff it down with a foam pad 500 grit, hit it again with some gray scotch right to kind of even it out. It's already black, so I don't need to go ahead and spray it black. There's no stickers on it. So instead of me just airbrushing a freehand on there, I'll just go get some like schoolhouse chalk and I'll go ahead and do a light sketch over the whole thing to kind of get a placement of where I'm going, the size. And then once I go ahead and start to airbrush like I'm doing right here, a lot of that chalk just blows right off the air pressure. And then after you go ahead and do some airbrushing, you wipe it down again, the rest of the chalk comes right off. So it's not like it's stuck underneath the surface. In the upper left is one of my um, little sketches I did for the client. Kind of showing what I'm thinking about. Got his approval. Did it on um, Procreate on my iPad. And when I'm airbrushing, I'm pretty loose about everything. I, I kind of feel like I'm just kind of sculpting with airbrush paint. I kind of hit it back and forth, kind of seeing what it feels like. Right here, kind of did these bone things. Wasn't too fond of it, so I went ahead and just sprayed over it. Got out some fine line tape right there, laid it on there. Started doing a little bit of masking off to kind of give it a tighter look to it. Untape it, then I go ahead and put some overlay right on the top of it to kind of give it some depth. Then go ahead and take my freehand shield, start to kind of curve the bottoms. Get a little fine line brush, just start to add some details so it just don't look like these white popsicle sticks that come on the front of the head. So I'm using the airbrush gun and the paintbrush and some stencil. So kind of get a little bit of everything for it. So just not one thing. The client wanted it all in black and white. The only request he did one was he did want to add a little bit of yellow to it because he used to have a Yamaha and their colors are black and yellow. So you want to kind of go like, yeah, I got myself an Indian now, but I used to have a Yamaha. This is about the part of the job where I'm like, why the hell did I do so many feathers on this thing? You know, because once it gets started, I got to finish it. So it's just redundant over and over again, I'm trying to break them up, kind of give them a little more pop here and there. Something to make them different and interesting for each feather. I keep some worn out junky brushes around the shop too for this one reason. So when I'm laying it on there, I don't have a nice tightness to it. Everything's a little loose, some frayed little edges on some of these brushes. It kind of gives it a little more texture to it. This is another junky brush, not as bad, just kind of lost some of its tip. Use that to kind of give it a stitch work around the whole thing. Indian motorcycle logo right there, put it on there, a little, little dusting. And this right here, this is sort of like the, the bead work for Native Americans. Did all that by hand, unpeel it, kind of looks like corn. So I kind of had to break it up and make it a little different, kind of give it some highlights and shadows in each one so it was all uniform. And I didn't like the way it was just white around the edge, so I added some black to kind of break that up. Then I realized, hell, I got to do the same on the sides of the ear area now, too. So after I finish this part, flip it on its side and start doing the side pieces. And I'm not trying to be too perfect with it because I'm trying to mimic like a hand done headdress. Even the pinstriping's kind of not perfect. It's all hand done. I want to make it not like look like it was done with a computer. A little white highlight kind of brings it out a little bit more. I know a lot of you guys out there know what a skull looks like, but it's always good to have a reference, have something in front of you you can kind of work off of. A lot of little details you just don't think about because your brain's not thinking about it. Once I laid in the skull, I realized it's just way too white, the whole helmet. So I took some root beer candy from um, House of Color and went ahead and just did a light dusting over the skull to kind of give it that bone texture or color to it. Yeah, looks pretty good. Looks better once it's cleared. Right now it's a little brownish, but it, it, it's right. And 
because the job doesn't really have any sharp tape off lines for different colors, it's all freehand airbrush and paintbrush, I can kind of get away with putting about three or four good coats in one setting on it and not have to sand it down and redo it again. It'll kind of blend itself on out. And after I sprayed it, good three or four coats, let it set a day, unpeel it, there we go. In this helmet style, you can take the front of the helmet off and it becomes a three quarters. So right there, that weird line is where the three quarter stops. That's where I stopped the headdress and did the skull. So when you take it off, it's not like you're breaking up the artwork. It still looks like a headdress. And then you click the front on, you got the skull too for extra. And I gave him that one yellow feather on the back for the Yamaha colors. And there you go, it's all done. I let it sit for a good couple days before I box it up and ship it out to, I think this was in South Carolina. So customer was happy, gave him constant updates. Everything was good, no surprises. All right, everybody, have a good day. Take care, see you whenever. Later.